Tôi mời Dr. An Nguyễn là giáo sư và cụ phó giáo sư của trường đại học Chicago. Và không biết là Dr. An Nguyễn đã chuẩn bị chưa? Xin mời Dr. An Nguyễn chúng ta bắt đầu luôn. Và Dr. An Nguyễn có 20 phút để trình bày. Hello, it is such a pleasure to be invited today to speak to this Congress. Um, I, I really thank all the organizers for this opportunity. I am an advanced heart failure cardiologist at the University of Chicago. I care for patients with chronic heart failure and for those with advanced heart failure who go on to have heart transplant or implantation of left ventricular assist devices. And so with that background, I will be spending the next 10 minutes giving you an update on the management of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Here are my disclosures. Most of the data surrounding the management of heart failure today comes from trials that have been performed in the last three decades. This slide shows a really nice timeline of all of those heart failure trials that started um, mostly in 1986. And these trial re trials really form the, the foundation of heart failure medications and how the combination of, of of medications came to be. So first for beta blockers, there are studies like Merit HF and Comet. For ACE inhibitors or ARBs, the studies are consensus and solved among others. And finally, for mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists, the trials that we um, have for those are, consent, are aroused and emphasis. And really this treatment regimen was static for a very long time. Um, and there was really a lull in new therapies until about 2014, um, in which newer medications were finally introduced into the armamentarium of treatment of heart failure. And so that is what I will mostly be spending the next 10 minutes on. The first medication that I will discuss is the cubitral valsartan, or also known as Entresto. And really the paradigm of heart failure management began to change with this aptly named study, Paradigm HF, that was published in 2014. This randomized control looked at LCZ696, which at that time is um, was, was what was Entresto was called, versus Enalapril. And this trial enrolled patients with NYHA class two through four symptoms and an EF of less than 40%. There was a single blind run-in period to ensure tolerability of either medications. And actually the trial was stopped prematurely because the primary endpoint of cardiovascular mortality and heart floor hospitalization was met early. And all endpoints favored Entresto in the end. And so therefore it is now a class one indication to change all patients who are on ACE inhibitors or ARBs to Entresto. Now there are some criticisms to this trial. The first is that the comparator to Entresto was an ACE inhibitor and not an ARB, which is a part of the component of Entresto. And another criticism is this use of the run-in period, which essentially removed all patients who were intolerant of the medication. Now in my practice, all of my patients are switched to Entresto. Some of my partners even start patients directly on it. I personally start with an ARB. And if the patient tolerates it, I quickly move to Entresto. And the reason why I use an ARB is because no washout period is needed compared to an ACE inhibitor. The next new medication is the SGLT2 inhibitor. And it has really been a blockbuster for the world of not only heart failure, but also diabetes and chronic kidney disease management. These medications inhibit reabsorption of glucose in the kidney and therefore lower blood sugar. Now, its role, proposed mechanism in heart failure is really unknown, but um, there are many theories. First, improved interstitial volume reduction, improved cardiac contractility, improved tissue oxygenation, reduced inflammation and remodeling, more efficient energy use and metabolic benefits. And the first trial that really tipped off that this class of medications had anything to do with heart failure was the EMPA-REG trial published in 2015. This trial evaluated the use of empagliflozin in patients with type 2 diabetes at high risk for cardiovascular events. And what was found was that there was a lower rate of the primary composite endpoint of cardiovascular outcome and death from any cause when the study drug was added to standard care. And interesting one, interestingly, one of the secondary outcomes of the study evaluated heart failure hospitalizations, and there was a strong and surprising signal for reduction of heart failure hospitalizations with empagliflozin. 
And it was with this data, the emperor reduced trial was conducted. And this trial looked at empagliflozin compared to placebo in patients with heart failure with or without diabetes. 3,600 patients with NYHA class two through four symptoms on optimal medical therapy were randomized to either empagliflozin or placebo. And the primary outcome of cardiovascular death or hospitalization for heart failure and the total number of hospitalizations for heart failure were in favor of empagliflozin with, as you can see, an early and sustained separation of the curves. The next set of trials I'll present um, on SGLT2 inhibitors looked at the net, the, a cousin of empagliflozin called dapagliflozin. The declared to me 58 trial compared dapagliflozin to placebo in patients with type 2 diabetes and were at risk for uh, adverse cardiovascular events. And dapagliflozin here did not meet its endpoint of reduction in major adverse cardiovascular events, but did show a statistically significant improvement in cardiovascular death or heart failure hospitalization. And similarly to empagliflozin, dapagliflozin was then studied in just heart failure patients with or without diabetes. Patients with an EF of less than 40% and NYHA class two through four symptoms were included, and patients were randomized to dapagliflozin or placebo. And the primary outcome of worsening heart failure, just described as hospitalization or need for IV diuretics and cardiovascular mortality, favored dapagliflozin. SGLT2 inhibitors have not yet made it into the ACC AHA guidelines as a class one or two indication, but in my own practice and my colleagues' practice, I consider SGLT2 inhibitors really the fourth medication to complete the foundation of optimal medical therapy for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. The last medications I will present, in contrast, do not have as compelling of evidence, and its place in the armamentarium of heart failure therapy is not yet known. Verisiguat is the first medication. It is a soluble guanylate cyclase activator. It modulates endothelial dysfunction. And so the endocardial endothelium generates nitric oxide, which then stimulates soluble guanylate cyclase mediated cyclic GMP production, which then regulates contractility and diastolic function. And in heart failure, this process becomes dysregulated such that there's deficiency or insufficiency of the nitric oxide soluble guanylate cyclase and cyclic GMP pathway. And so this ultimately leads, leads to an impairment in diastolic relaxation and microvascular dysfunction. Now, again, Verisiguat activates soluble guanylate cyclase, therefore enhancing the effects of nitric oxide to increase cyclic GMP activity, which is potentially the reason it was found to be effective in the Victoria trial which was a randomized control trial of 5,000 patients with NYHA class two through four symptoms and an EF of less than 45%. Patients were randomized to either placebo or verisiguat in addition to baseline guideline directed medical therapy. And the primary outcome was a composite of death from cardiovascular causes or first hospitalization for heart failure. And the primary endpoint was reached for verisiguat and for death, for, was reached for verisiguat and for death from any cause or first hospitalization for heart failure. But as you can see, the data is not as compelling as it did not reach the individual endpoints. So the question is, where does verisiguat fall into the options we have for treatment? And we still don't know the answer. At this time in point in my practice, I only add on verisiguat if the patient is already tolerating maximal doses of guideline-directed medical therapy. And given my patient population already has very advanced heart failure, there are few patients that actually can be added um, can have verisiguat added to their medications. And the same can be said about omecamptive macarbol. It is a selective cardiac myosin activator, and it enhances effective myosin cross-bridge formation and duration, thus leading to an increase in systolic ejection time and ejection fraction. The Galactic HF trial studied about 8,000 patients with an EF of less than 35% and randomized them to omecamptive macarbol or placebo. The primary outcome was a composite of first heart failure event or death from cardiovascular causes. And the primary endpoint was not met. Actually, the primary endpoint was met for omecamptive, but not for the individual endpoint of cardiovascular death. And additionally, in the omecamptive group, the patients had a higher troponin level at the end of the treatment. So given this weak and, and conflicting data, Amgen, the company who developed this medication, pulled the plug on it, and it is now not even being developed despite being FDA approved. 
And finally, I'll touch briefly on IV iron. IV iron has had a long history in, in usage of usage in heart failure and has had very conflicting data. But I will show you the most latest data from the Affirm heart failure trial published in Lancet last year. Patients with an EF of less than 50% with iron deficiency anemia who were recently hospitalized for heart failure were randomized to IV iron or placebo. And what was found was that IV iron was safe to use in these patients and re reduced the risk of heart failure hospitalizations with no effect on the risk of cardiovascular death. And since for me, this is an easy medication for patients with high tolerability, this is something I'm checking in all of my patients and giving them um, if they are iron deficient. Now, I was only given 10 minutes to talk, so naturally I've missed several up-and-coming therapies for heart failure. These include therapies for TTR amyloid, advances in imaging for heart failure, such as MRI, treatment of arrhythmia and pacing strategies for heart failure, percutaneous therapies for MR and TR, ventricular remodeling therapies and atrial shunts. Cardiomems is a big one. That is one that we use all the time, cardiac contractility modulation, barrel reflex activation therapy. There's also a device for cardiorenal syndrome being developed by Procerian right now. And obviously um, the therapies for advanced heart failure, including mechanical circulatory support and innovations in heart, heart transplant. And with that, I will conclude with this beautiful aerial shot of the University of Chicago Medicine Campus. And I thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, Dr. Anne Nguyen, for a very, very, very interesting uh, uh, presentation uh, about uh, the whole, the whole vision uh, about, uh, uh, for example, an optimal treatment uh, for the half failure with uh, reduced the agitation fraction. Uh, that's very nice, and everything is uh, is covered in the uh, presentation. Uh, now I would like to ask in the audio auditorium, uh, there is some comment or some uh, uh, ideas and question, everything uh, in the audio. Uh, this is our very, very fantastic and the result of uh, the progress in the medical treatment, uh, very, very nice and the truck. Uh, 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 you know, in the RCT and also the uh, real world uh, uh, medical uh, evidence. Uh, but uh, for example, uh, when we talk about a very new uh, uh, drug with uh, I, um, uh, HNT2 inhibitor, yeah, I think this is very good, or acne, yeah, but there is now very expensive. When we talk about uh, uh, about the cost benefit, uh, especially in Vietnam, and uh, very uh, uh, we have to think about that. Uh, you say when the patient is uh, tolerated with uh, AC inhibitor uh, or ARB, uh, you you need them to uh, change or to uh, to change them to the the acne. Uh, that is good with the, the result clinical uh, study, but uh, for the uh, very practical and economic, and because, uh, for example, some ARB, uh, the AC inhibitor, like uh, enalapril or uh, perendoprin or something, this is very good for patient, and especially not to make expensive, and uh, this is very important. In Vietnam, this is available. When, that, when the patient is uh, stable with uh, some uh, drug, uh, the available of a drug is uh, very, very important uh, uh, with uh, the cost of this. Uh, uh, I, I don't know uh, when we have an, a good drug uh, with acne or some uh, new HGNT2 inhibitor, uh, then uh, we can change them from AC inhibitor to the acne, acne, acne or HGNT2 inhibitor. What do you think about that? because uh, this is very new drug and uh, these are expensive. This, are, this is a problem in Vietnam. Uh, everything is all very, uh, very uh, spectacular. Uh, and I think an our recommendation in the uh, Heart Association of Vietnam, yeah, we have it to uh, uh, alarm or to show this is our good result. Uh, but what do you, uh, you think? A lot of patients, especially in, in rural, 
or the and uh, the use and the uh, IC inhibitor uh, uh, in the treatment of heart failure with reduced and uh, uh, exigent fraction is a uh, good and stable. And the adherence of the patient is all uh, good. But uh, now when you change, maybe this is difficult for patient to find out in some pharmacy or something that especially not in the big city. What do you think about that? Các đồng nghiệp còn có bình luận hoặc là cái gì hỏi không? Chúng tôi thì thấy hai cái bài của, của thầy Huy với lại của cô An Nguyên cũng khá là phù hợp với nhau. Về chuyện máy móc thì chúng ta không có. Vâng, xin mời giáo sư Minh ạ. Không biết cái cô An Nguyên cô có connect với hội nghị không? Để mình có thể là mình đặt cái câu hỏi. Còn riêng của thầy Huy thì có lẽ là trong khi chờ đợi từ từ mới xét từ sáng từ bên nhà đương truyền của bên Mỹ or no get them in come You are here, Miss Anguin. Mr. Anguin? Yeah. Mr. Anguin? You hear me? You hear me uh, clearly, uh, Miss uh, Dr. Anguin? Please answer. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, can you hear me? I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, sorry, sorry, they, sorry. Uh, sorry they changed yeah. it um, so that I could be a panelist. I'm so sorry about that. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> to, to very answer... far, very far from you right now. <laughs> I would like uh, to ask you uh, some uh, uh, your experience uh, with uh, using the uh, ferrous sulfate sulfate. In case of high failure, uh, EF uh, reducer, EF, that means uh, how about the criteria for using the uh, okay. fast, uh, in case of uh, anemia? Sure. I yeah. um, so, so we check for iron deficiency anemia, and many of my patients have, have percent saturations of less than 10% in single digits. Okay. And we set up for IV iron for them, and they um, they they um, get one infusion, and the 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 results are amazing. Uh, the patients feel so good, and I think in part that's why there's a reduction in heart failure hospitalization because they feel good. So, so in my, I don't know if IV iron is even available in Vietnam, or do you have to supplement with oral? Right, yeah, because um, as you know, um, uh, anemia is uh, a uh, problem uh, in Vietnam because of uh, many, yeah, many go especially the parasite infection. So uh, sometimes uh, we uh, have uh, some uh, patient with anemia associated with our uh, high failure uh, reducer uh, EF, and uh, we hesitate uh, to use uh, the ferrous uh, uh, can we use uh, by uh, intravenous uh, rose or only by uh, oral rose? Can you swallow or injection? It's is both. That's a, a way to use. Well, well, the IV iron is fastest. The, the problem is um, with, with oral iron, um, it, it changes the patient's stool black and tarry, and they don't like that. And also, there's only an efficacy up to one tablet per day. And, and, and so in order to really restore your ferritin with oral iron will take a long time, whereas with IV iron, you can get much more very quickly. And I've noticed it, it, immense results with just one infusion. Is it available in Vietnam? Uh, I think it, uh, it's was available in Vietnam now, uh, and we were trying to uh, to do the, to use uh, in uh, some uh, special case. But uh, uh, the, for the long term follow up, uh, we have now uh, the uh, statistic uh, the result to declare uh, clearly. Yeah, might yeah. be in that uh, next uh, next year we have uh, published uh, some. Uh, result concerning about the, uh, the this uh, new ther therapy. Okay. Really? 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anwen. Of course. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Anwen. It's very nice and uh, presentation. Yeah. Why don't you thank have you. a question for the, the, the collection? We, uh, uh, we, it's thanks for, for, for you after. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank uh, you.